Darren Hovis here at Par 4 Fitness. Uh, I'm actually home right now, but uh, I've got Will Thompson. He's a freshman on the University of Texas men's golf team. And um, many of you may not know Will, but um, he qualified for the 2014 U.S. Amateur and was the youngest ever to do so. At, what were you, 13? 13 the first time. 13 yeah. and um so going into his um uh, into his freshman year at texas he was number 10 ranked player uh in the class of 2019 uh ajga rolex uh all-american honorable mention uh also won the 2018 new york state am and um finished third at the 2018 western junior championship so some pretty big events and um i started working with you a few years ago Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's just been a blast to, to get to know you. I see you at graduate high school, move on to the college ranks. And yep. um, so you kind of went on a non-traditional route. You were uh, down here in Florida. You, you went to high school for uh, a year or two. And then, yeah, just my first year. Yeah, and then you did online courses after that, right? Mm -hmm. So you're basically just doing school and, and playing. Yeah, pretty much. That was about it. But you you committed to Texas at 15, right? Yeah, my yeah my freshman year, I remember I went. Um, I was playing in the CBNI, which is one of the AJGA Invitationals, and it was right in uh, Houston. So we flew into Austin for my second visit. I'd already visited Texas, and I visited a few other places. And then we thought that was. I mean, I kind of just knew that I wanted to go there, so we thought that was a good time to just commit. Right. So I mean, being part of I mean one of the top 10 golf teams every year is pretty exciting yeah it's competitive it's tough but it's really fun and obviously like the coaches have had so much experience fields put through i'm um, like spieth jonathan vegas fratelli is like around a lot bo hostler he had and there's like a few other guys too so he knows what he's doing to try to get guys on tour which is really helpful Right, right. And how do you guys, so how do you stay competitive? I guess you, you've got a really competitive team, so that keeps you all really fresh. And every time you're going out to play, you're, you're looking to shoot low scores, right? Yeah, it's almost always competition. We have qualifying almost every week, especially in the fall. So the way he does it is if you qualify for the AM, you get into the first term of the year. And then um, if you get a top 10 in the actual events, you get one more spot added on. And then if you win – you get three, I think. And then he does things kind of like that throughout qualifying too. So like Pearson has just been playing on awesome. So he was qualified for like the entire year, I think, at the start of the spring semester. So like he just had, he didn't have to qualify anymore just because he played well. So I like how he does that to kind of reward yeah. play. But well, I mean, it incentivizes good play, right? Yeah, exactly. So, but even like other than that, we're always doing – competitive just like we play 21 is a short game game that we play and then like bet some push-ups or whatever um just how's 21 work How, how's that um, game work? you have two balls and we have a really bit like massive chipping green so it's really nice so you can do a lot with it but we have you have two golf balls and a lot of people play it as if um like you get points if you're closer to the other people playing but we try to make it harder so we go by the club so you put the club head in the hole if it's within the entire club then you get a point if it's in the shaft between the club head and the grip inside the grip, then it's two points. And if it's inside the, just the grip, it's three points. And if you make it, it's five. Okay. Yeah. And if you miss the green on the chip, it's minus one. Okay. So maybe some things that you guys could, could put into your play in practice. Yeah, it's fun. Um, so how did you get in, involved with golf? Starting off. Um, it was mainly just my parents. My parents got into it right when I um, kind of, like, got to an age where I could, like, play sports and stuff. So I was playing a lot of sports when I was younger, but they got me on the course when I think I was, like, four or five or something, and I would just kind of smack it around. And then um, growing up, I played football, basketball, lacrosse. I, like, played a little bit of soccer. So I was kind of just doing everything, just, like, having fun, just um, playing sports. But then – um, when I was 10, I believe, I met Joe, who's my swing coach now still, who you know. Um, and that's where I met Ryan Seenberg, too, who was my trainer for a while when I was younger. Um, and that's when I kind of started to get 
better and like actually work on mechanics. And I played in a lot of IJGTs and did really well in that. Um, and that's when I kind of I stopped playing football first, and I think lacrosse kind of came after that. And then I just really started to focus on golf, basically. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is, I mean, developing into an athlete first, and then yeah. you can kind of pick and choose what you're best at, and then that that kind of drives your decision moving forward. Now, I mean, you had you had success early as a golfer, um, mm-hmm. which is is pretty unusual. I mean, that, that doesn't happen to too many people in the world. You yeah. Know? <laughs> so it's, um, you're rather lucky to, to do that. And mm-hmm. that, that way you, you knew what you were doing um, basically at a, a really young age. And yeah. A lot of the kids out there, at least that are looking to go um, play collegiately, I mean, they oftentimes don't know until their junior, senior year where they're going. Mm-hmm. Um, so Will's a very different example of kind of how you can get through uh, junior golf and high school golf um, very differently and have success early. Yeah. But having the foundation of a strong athletic base. So yeah. kind of walk us through the USAM experience. I know yeah. it was at a club nearby, right? Um, the, the qualifier. Well, yeah, the qualifier was at um, Menden up in Rochester, which was, I didn't play there crazy. It wasn't like a home course or anything, but um, when I played, they let you play high school golf in there, up there starting seventh grade. So I played seventh and eighth grade and that was our home course. So we played there a good amount. So I knew okay. it pretty well. Uh, I had my dad on the bag. Um, and then, yeah, actually I was, I was pretty burnt out from like the summer. I played a bunch of golf. And then I just went to uh, one of my friend's lake houses for the weekend. And I was like, and I think the qualifier was on Tuesday or something. So okay. I talked to my dad. And I was like, do I like, should I even really like play in the club? Like, I don't really think. To my dad and I was like, I don't like think I'm going to do that great. Like I haven't practiced in a few days. I'm tired, all this stuff. And uh, he was just like, no, like I'll hop on the bag. We'll just go hit around and see what happens and try to have fun. Um, <laughs> and then I, I, don't know, I, so I shot 68 and 66 in both rounds, which I, I mean, definitely my lowest two consecutive competitive rounds I think I'd ever had. And I think I had 24 putts in the first round and then 23. So it was just like, I, I don't even know how to explain So was that like a pretty big deal? I know like a couple of these – Amateurs have qualified for like the U.S. Open and U.S. Women's Open, things like that. Where like reporters all over that. Like, were you, was that a big story when you went to Atlanta? Yeah, um, more than I thought, to be honest. Because I like got on it. There was like a short. I remember before, right after um, I didn't get the Monroe Invitational was right like a few weeks before the qualifier, and I didn't get into it. Because I was young and I, like, it kind of made sense, to be honest. But um, And then right after that, the Porter Cup guys called me up and wanted to give me an invite, which I did not expect. So that was really cool. And I've played in that for a bunch of years now. Um, and then got some stuff like on the local news and then like a really short shout out on Golf Channel. But then when I got there, like after the first round, there were like a bunch of uh, like cameras and stuff like waiting to do. Like I had to do like three interviews, I think, after the first round or something. Um, so it was pretty cool. It was crazy. I wasn't, I still had braces. Like I had, I had Joe come down and caddy for me and it was just, it was at Atlanta athletic club too, which is like, just like a big, just big complex, like two golf courses, just an unbelievable spot. So that was pretty cool. Like probably one of my best golf experiences I've ever had. Definitely. Did you play with any, uh, any guys that have made it big? Um, no, I actually played with, Two mid-ams, I think. Okay. Which, honestly, like, uh, was kind of better for me because they were really relaxed and nice guys. So, like, it was just kind of playing. It might have been stressful if I was with, like, a big-time college guy or whatever. Don't yeah. hate on the mid-ams. I'm a mid-am guy. No, I'm not hating. No, they're – yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was better because they're, <laughs> they're just more – like, obviously, they're still good, but they just um, – Us guys of... over 25 aren't washed up yet. <laughs> no, I agree. <laughs> but, but, yeah. It was fun. I mean – the the golf courses were just too big for me at the time, um, but 
I, I, I hit my, I still hit it a decent way. Like I hit it like 270, I think, but I mean, the courses are playing 75 ish and they made it soft in front and then the green's really firm. So uh, hitting, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, that's hard to keep up, but I mean, yeah. you put your, yourself in a spot to, to learn. And, um, I guess we've all got to fail at some level before we have some success. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess what's one of the like most memorable golf days or rounds or experience of your life so far? The, you mentioned the, uh, Western junior, um, mm-hmm third place that was I shot 63 the second day and that was after yep. like I had kind of been struggling for like I just wasn't playing that great for a while and then I, I started to play okay in the beginning of the summer but it was still rounds where I just felt like I was playing really well but I would shoot 73 sometimes dropping like a 71 but then come back with a 75 I wouldn't really know like like kind of what the heck's going on and then that round I just like striped it made a bunch of putts just went really low well i think that's my second lowest um tournament round was that one uh, okay. and that was good just to kind of like you just like just to see it happen one like i knew i had the capability at the time even though i wasn't like hadn't put it together but when you finally get to like see it it just boosts your confidence big time and then i had a good summer after that which was which was huge um, right Japan after my um, freshman year, my freshman year summer, I played with, on the team, there were four guys on the U.S. team, and it was Matt Wolf, um, who obviously is on tour now and playing awesome, uh, Austin Necro, who is at Oklahoma State, and then Norman Zhang, who got his tour card, and he had those um, first, like, exemption spots or whatever, and now I think he's kind of battling to get it back, but that was an awesome experience. We all played really well and then ended up winning as a team, uh, awesome. which was really cool. So I learned a lot from those guys and they were, yeah, just, for sure. Yeah. They're awesome. So what were your, let's go to the, like your junior and senior year of, of high school. Like what were your days like? What, what kind of time did you put in? Let's see. Um, when I was doing the online school, it was kind of nice because, um, the way it was set up is you just kind of had to like do your work by a certain deadline. Like you didn't have to like hop on at whatever time, whatever time. So I would just kind of like pick two or three classes a day to get like a good amount of work done and like go through the modules and everything. And then I could just kind of plan around like, Oh, I want to do work this morning or I want to go practice first or work out and whatnot. So um, a lot of times I would go, I would work out in the morning and then do a little bit of schoolwork and then go practice for like the afternoon for a few hours um, and then just come back and like do a little bit more schoolwork kind of thing. Yeah. It was just nice to be able to space it out because even like at college, we have all our classes like really early in the morning and then we go straight to the golf course and blah, blah, blah. But it was nice to just kind of piece it all together. And especially high school too and middle school, like we didn't get out till two or three. And when there's a time change, you come home, chill for a little bit. You don't start practicing till like, four five and then you only have a couple hours of daylight so yeah that was definitely helpful uh, as far as structure how do you um manage your practice sessions like you you go out and you have a set schedule of okay i'm gonna work on this i'm gonna work on that today and then like you have some objectives of that of that session or are you just kind of looking for ball flights and are you more of a go and play type guy it kind of depends. I'm I'm not really a go out and play type guy. I definitely, even when I do play, I like to practice before or after, or at least warm up and then practice afterwards to, like, work on stuff. Um, but I'm, like, kind of mechanical. Like, not crazy mechanical, but I'm good at just, like, taking a video and pointing out a few thing, things that I'm working on, like, that I know um, what, like, should be happening when I'm hitting it well. Um, so I'll just kind of warm up. I'll always – I'll usually start on the range – or just chipping a little bit and then um, just hit some, get loose, and then I'll take a video, look at it, and then if there's something that's, like, a little bit off, I'll just work on that for a little bit. And I probably end up hitting balls for, I mean, if I get going on something, it could last longer, but, like, probably average hour, hour and a half. And then I've gotten a lot better at uh, uh, focusing on short game now. It, it was really helpful with uh, at school or short game areas, like, hard to not spend time on kind of. Um, so I ended up 
trying to chip for at least an hour a day. Cause that was also one of the things that the coaches told me. They said, um, like you can hit it great. Like blah, blah, blah. You hit it as good as a lot of these guys. But, um, the difference, like when you're trying to go on tour is if you can get your short game going when, on the days that you're not hitting it well. So I've yeah. been focus on that a lot. Yeah. And you see so many players with, with awesome swings and the short game's really yeah. what it comes down to. And I know I've talked to some guys that have gone back and forth from PJ tour and uh corn Ferry tour level. And it's just like the biggest difference is, is the top players on the PJ tour. Just they've got six short games. Yeah. Um, so that's that's definitely where I think most players should spend their time. That's where they're going to get the most benefit out of it, if, especially if they're looking to play at a uh, at a collegiate level. Yeah, and, definitely. And beyond. Uh, yeah. So, what kind of classes are you taking right now? Online? Now um, I'm taking a government class, uh, accounting, a team-based communications class, and what am I leaving out? Oh, Greek mythology. I don't like Greek mythology, but it's like <laughs> whatever that I have to take. Good. All right. Uh, so let's do a couple of quick questions. Who's, uh, who's the closest teammate on your team right now? Who's your best buddy? Um, that's a good question. I'm really uh, – Cash Carter is a kid on the team that I've gotten really close with. He doesn't um, okay. play in the lineup much, but we've gotten – it's become pretty good friends. I live with Pearson, Cootie, and Cole Hammer. Um, so we're all pretty close. I'm close with Parker, too. I, it's like a lot of people always ask me that, too. And, it, like, even this uh, senior on our team, Nick Costello, is, like, just a great kid. Um, I think what's different or kind of unexpected about our team is just how close kind of, like, everyone is. And we yeah. all have similar personality. We just get along really well. Obviously, there's some conflict every once in a while or – Somebody gets a little bit out of line and whatever, but overall, like we can spend a bunch of time together and go out and whatnot and just like have a good time and just yeah. be friends. So that's really helpful. Um, what's your lowest score? Ever? I think sixty-one. Ever. Sixty-one. Mm -hmm. Of course, tournament just out, kind of playing. Um, I've shot sixty-one here at Talos, and Talos. then. Um, I think that might be it. I had a 62 in like a, the, like the junior New York state am when I was like 13. Um, but I don't think any other crazy low casual rounds. Okay. Nothing near 60, like probably a couple 64s and whatnot, but I think 61 is the only. All right. Singular. Fa favorite on course snack. I used, when I was younger, I used to have my mom bring out Subway sandwiches. Which I, I <laughs> but now What's I up, keep Jared? it simple. Yeah, honestly. I keep it simple and just kind of go with, like, a bar. I don't really go too crazy. I have, like, some almonds every once in a while and then, like, a power bar. Um, okay. I like those cheese crackers with the peanut butter. Those are really good. Okay. Favorite yeah. golf movie? Oof. Ten Cups, a classic. Ten Cups, good one. I was Greatest like, game ever played, I like a lot. Okay. I mean, Happy Gilmore's hilarious, but I don't need, like, it's hard to, for me to call that, like, a golf movie, but it is. So, that's a good one, obviously. That's my Happy favorite. I'm, I'm a golf and a hockey guy. So it's, yeah, it's, that, yeah, I guess that is a good combo. That movie's so funny. Like, that's an all-time, that's an all-time great movie by itself. Caddyshack. It's, like, kind of, yeah, I mean, it's a golf movie. Most, most of them are pretty good. If, yeah. if you could have a walk-up song to the first tee, what would it be? <laughs> um, I don't, there's been a lot of good rap music to come out recently. Like, I would do some kind of rock and roll one, but I like uh, I'm a big little Uzi Burt fan. He just dropped an album. So probably one of the songs off that. Maybe we'll play that for the intro for, for the interview today. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, thanks for uh, giving us a little bit of a look into your life right now. I know things are a little crazy with the um, stay-at-home orders and everything, but you're, you're kind of playing, practicing, getting your stuff done. Um, just kind of looking to get better each day still, right? Yeah, that's the goal. I mean, it's a little bit hard with just slowly all the tournaments are kind of getting canceled in the summer, but it's yeah. kind of it's good that since the course is still open, we can 
practice and everything there's i mean just to get out of the house even for a few hours is nice keep yeah. working on the game and so you can kind of refocus your your practice based on uh, any revisions in your schedules yeah definitely good well thanks for joining us well i appreciate yeah. it yeah thank you